nice. Madcatster on a recent live stream had sent me, offered to send me, and has now sent me, a PDF, a uh, Blair complaint, Illuminati legal thingy to uh, concerning Osmedia. And upon reading it, I had a good chuckle, not least because so much of it was redacted. But you know what? That's fine. We can still look at this and have a little chuckle. That's how it works, right? So just before we go through this nine-page document, I should of course shout out Mad Catster, link to Mad Catster's channel in the pinned comment down below. Since the source came directly from him, it seems only right that be the only source I link. The first page, as you can see, is quite heavily redacted, but that's because it involves legal names and I believe addresses. The district court in question is Colorado. Plaintiff and Blair collectively referred to herein as the plaintiffs by and through their undersigned counsel, name, law firm, submit this amended complaint against defenders. There's a few. I'm assuming Osmedia is one of these. It would make some sense. One, plaintiff is a Colorado limited liability company, LLC, with a principal office mailing address. Obviously, we don't share doxes. Two, plaintiff, Blair, is an individual residing in the state of Colorado. For them, plaintiffs own and operate a popular YouTube channel. The word popular is a bit of a misleading remark at this point. You get about as many views as I do, and my channel's not even a tenth of the size of yours. That's embarrassing, isn't it? Although I think I might be on more views this month than you. Flex dab! I, I should be doing this right. Three, four, and five are the defendants, and they are completely redacted, understandably so in these matters. I have been led to believe, courtesy of Mad Catster, one of the defendants is in fact Osmedia, which means yes, Illuminati is pushing ahead with suing Osmedia. Six. This court has subject matter jurisdiction because the events complained of occurred in Colorado and the resolution of this dispute requires the application of Colorado law. 7. This court has personal jurisdiction over the defendants pursuant to and then something that I don't know what any of those words mean, it looks like an equation. I know someone's going to tell me the legal symbol jargon nonsense, I don't actually care enough, but I'm sure many of you do, so please do not get too offended by my flippant attitude towards a symbol. 8. The venue is some place in the state of Colorado. Factual allegations. Oh, this is my favorite part. Nine, the defendants are former employees of basically Blair. Yeah, basically the Illuminati business. Not much of a business anymore, but business nonetheless. 10, defendant signed a confidentiality agreement on the 2nd of June, 2021. All employees signed these. So 11 and 12 signed theirs on the 4th of October and the 5th of May, 2021. Collectively, the redacted agreement will be referred to herein as necessary as the agreements in capital. 14. All the defendants' confidentiality agreements contain language pertaining to the employees understanding that by entering into the confidentiality agreement, they are obliged to, and the plaintiff's goal is to protect its confidential propriety information and ensure that all employees agree to maintain the confidentiality of blank information. I know nothing of any of this, just to be clear, but I do want to point out this is not going to save Illuminati's channel. Compensation is possible and everyone is destroyed at the same time, but it still won't change. The Illuminati channel is dead. 15. Defendant blank and Miss blank, Blair I'd assume, began a romantic relationship in or around May of 2020 and began living together in Defendant Blank's house in or around January of 2021. Now, I wonder who that could be. Ooh, the noggin joggin. Hmm. I'm stroking my beard. It makes subtle sense. Actually, we know exactly who that one is. In or around September of 2021, Miss, basically Blair, hired Defendant to act as a project manager for Blank. Hmm. In or around December 2021, Blair ended her relationship, romantic one, with blank. She moved out of his home and she purchased her own home. Now, as you see, the majority of page three and all of page four are redacted. Page five, though, 36. In June of 2023, defendants were sent a cease and desist letter. Yes, we covered this. We covered it here. 37. On July 25th, 2023, a defamatory video titled The Fall of Blair, YouTube's biggest bully was posted about plaintiffs. This video was published by blank. I believe that would be Cruel World Happy Mind. This video was published by, obviously, blank, but we already know who that is. 
In that video, defendants speak publicly about their intent to publish another defamatory video about Blair. 38. On or about the 16th of September, defendant blank released a video titled Let's Talk an Update on Illuminati Drama that would definitively be Oz Media. In this publication, Oz Media speaks to how he believes that the video will be used in a courtroom and includes false allegations of theft. They're not false though, everyone knows that. 39. Prior to defendant blank moved to Colorado in or around May of 2021, Blair purchased a car that she allowed him to use as his own, the car under the assumption that he would repay those funds, to which Blair and the defendant agreed and understood to be a loan prior to her transferring title to him. 40. In or around the latter part of May 2021, plaintiffs hired defendant blank. However, defendant blank violated multiple blank policies, despite performing none of his job functions. Mr. Blank was paid throughout his time at blank. 41. Despite agreeing to make payments on and keep the car in blank Colorado, on or about July 2021, defendant blank left to blank Texas with the car and never returned. 42. On or about July 28, 2021, Blair flew to Texas to locate her car using the embedded global position system application installed in the car. She retrieved the car and her spare key. When she recovered the car, she photographed and video recorded it. There was extensive damage to the car, including a broken glove box and cracks in the windshield. 44. On or about July 29, 2021, defendant blank and Blair agreed to meet with a police escort so that defendant blank could receive his belongings that were in the car. I wonder if anyone else has worked out who this part's about. You do wonder a bit, don't you? 46. After Blair left the state, Blank. Blair contacted the police department to perform a wellness check on the defendant. Ah, that. After the wellness check, defendant contacted Blair, stating that she should not contact him any longer. She has abided this request since the date it was made. Something there's a bit sus though, isn't it? Skipping to 50 because 47, 48 and 49 are redacted. In or about May of 2023, defendant created a one hour, 20 minute video with defendant, where both defendants make the following claims. That Blair stole the car, Blair committed wage theft, when in reality, she deducted taxes out of his earnings and other claims. During the video, both defendants openly state that they are aware of the NDA language of their agreements. After the video was produced, Blair sent a cease and desist letter to the defendant. He reacted by starting a GoFundMe page seeking money to pay for legal fees. Yes, and Oz Media did a lot of fundraising and smashed it very quickly, because it turns out no amount of NDA will prevent the public from knowing that you're a crappy person. No amount of NDA will deny them their right to speak. I, of course, fully understand the legal consequences. I really do. If an NDA was in effect, of course, there is a problem and they're going to have to deal with that in a courtroom. But the information is now out there. You haven't refuted any of this. You've spoken about Illuminati has about openness and transparency. But then the first thing that she did was send cease and desists. That didn't reek of, oh, openness. No, it smelt like a rancid form of bad optics. The next defendant, 53. Defendant Blank is a former employee of Illuminati. Mr. Blank is in violation of the agreement by turning over private messages between he and Blair to a YouTuber to exploit in a video made to slander. I mean, there was truth to a lot of it, so I doubt it was slander. 55. Regarding these messages, Defendant edited selectively picked messages to create the appearance that Blair made statements that she did not. He thereby created a false narrative that was damaging to plaintiffs, to Illuminati, to the channel. First claim of relief, breach of contract for all defendants. Blair and blank hereby incorporate the previous paragraphs by reference as though each were fully set forth therein. Plaintiffs and defendants have entered into valid and binding contracts supported by adequate consideration redacted. The agreements contain the following language. Employee agrees not to use confidential information and or proprietary data for the benefit of any other person, corporation or entity other than the employer during the term of employee's employment with employer or any time thereafter. These are quite ironclad from my perspective, but I just want to say, because I've already said it and it should be said again, apparently their moral compasses were strong enough to go, you know what, I don't care if she actually comes after me legally. She needs to be outed for being a crappy person. And by the way, going after Cruel World Happy Mind confirmed it. Although the legal eagle one was probably the funnier one. Especially the funnier one. You thought you were a trailblazer. You couldn't even trailblaze a race to the bottom. Creepshow art beat you to it first. 
Upon information and belief, defendants are in breach of these agreements by not exhaustively using confidential or proprietary information to defame or otherwise harm plaintiffs. Defendants have further established their intent to post additional content which will harm Illuminati in a devastating manner. You haven't seen a social blade, have you? The damage is done and there is no coming back. She will never be what she once was and she needs to accept it and again get used to saying would you like fries with that? Or is this too haram? As a result of the defendant's breaches, Illuminati have incurred damages including, but not limited to, loss of revenue, future loss of revenue, pain and suffering, and attorney's fees. I mean, attorney's fees should surely be within suffering. For the sake of it, it's called a consequence. There are many creators who are crappy people, who do crappy things. I have covered this extensively. Illuminati has not been defamed. Illuminati has been well and truly tarred, feathered and shamed. Second claim of relief. Blair and blank hereby incorporate the previous paragraphs by reference blah blah blah. The defendants published or caused to be published false statements that Blair committed various acts including abuse to her employees, wage theft, vehicular theft and other claims. Were they wrong though? These statements were defamatory because they tended to harm Blair's reputation by lowering her in the estimation of at least a substantial and respectable minority of community. No, they just proved the point that you were a shit person. They proved it, beyond reasonable doubt. No one was going for confirmation bias, they just wanted to know whether it was truthful or not. And then it was proven true, and your response was, fingers and ears, la 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 la, I'm above this, la la la, let me respond in a video and then la 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 la, and keep calm, carry on, and make crap content for months and end while my views tank. The defendants were acting with actual malice when they made these statements, knowing that they were false or while recklessly disregarding whether they were true or false when published. The viewers, readers or listeners of these defamatory statements likely understood them as true, because they are. Given that Blair's business as a professional media personality as a direct and proximate result of their defamation of Blair, defendants have caused and will cause plaintiffs, Blair, to incur special damages as alleged herein. The thing here is, and I've said it before, even if you win and you get damages, I'll be honest, your career on YouTube's done. You're not going to be able to get back your audience. Because what we're seeing is you using what resources you have available to bully people. That's all we're seeing. And let's be honest here, you were caught out and people dug deep when they saw how you handled Legal Eagle. They really dug then. Third claim for relief. Blair and blank hereby incorporate the previous blah. Number 69, Hue Hue, blah. 70. The defamatory nature of these publications was apparent on their face because they alleged commission of criminal offences and they were allegations incompatible with Blair's business trade professional office. 71. These publications were made regarding Blair. 72. Blair suffered non-economic and special damages as a result of defendant's publications. Prayer for relief. Wherefore, plaintiff prays that this court enter judgment in favour of plaintiffs on their claims plead herein included an award of pre- and post-judgment interest, attorney's fees and costs and any other relief it deems reasonable and necessary. Final page is the signature. Now this to me is fascinating. It is fascinating to me because it's a load of bollocks. It really is. She claims slander and defamation. The thing is, the slander and the defamation wasn't cherry picked or quote mined as she asserted in this paper. The NDA aspect of it is where she might well have a point. That is down to Oz Media and Hi I'm Wonder and others to come forward and say whether or not they were bound to an NDA. The car incident seems a bit more trivial, it really does, especially when accusations of her being remarkably volatile, violent and damaging, destructive in fact, make you wonder whether she did any of the damage to the car herself. Simply having a picture of the interior and saying they did this does not mean they did it, it just means you have a picture of the damaged interior of a car. I'm fascinated to see how this plays out further, I really am. But I don't see how she can win when her entire argument boils down to the following. Well, I like free speech, you're not allowed to. That seems accurate, yeah. And your channel's still dead, congratulations.